Chapter 8, Section 3, Similar Polygons. Similar polygons are going to have corresponding angles that are congruent. Lengths of corresponding sides are going to be proportional, which means I can write the same uh, ratio of corresponding sides from one similar polygon to another, and they should all be able to be reduced to the same um, ratio, so they're proportional. And then this little squiggle symbol indicates similarity. Um, if you think back to our congruence postulates for triangles, we had side, 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 angle, side, 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 angle, and angle, side, angle, I think is the one that I didn't say. Um, but if you remember, a lot of you wanted to say angle, angle, angle was a congruence postulate. Angle, angle, angle is not a congruence postulate, but it does tell you that you have similar figures um, or similar triangles. So corresponding angles are congruent. The lengths of corresponding sides are going to be proportional. And then this little um, squiggle symbol indicates similarity. Trapezoid ABCD is similar to trapezoid PQRS. List all the pairs of congruent angles and write the ratios of the corresponding sides in a statement of proportionality. Um, what, just like when I was talking about congruent figures, when I'm talking about similar figures, the notation does help me. So if you notice, we have ABCD and then we have PQRS are the trapezoid's names in our problem. Um, because A and P our first, we know that angle A and angle P are congruent. B and Q, we know that B and Q, angle B and angle Q are congruent. C and R, same thing, we know that they are congruent. And then D and S, same thing, we know that they are congruent as well. So when we look at the just the notation of the way that similar figures are, are written, we can tell which angles are going to be congruent to which. Um, so the first one says list all pairs of congruent angles. I just did that. We have angle A is congruent to angle P, angle B is congruent to angle Q, C is congruent to R, and D is congruent to S. I apologize, instead of equal, they should be um, con the congruent symbol. The next uh, thing that I need to do is write ratios of corresponding sides in a, statement, in a statement of proportionality. So I need to figure out my corresponding sides. For the sake of this problem, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put ABCD trapezoid on top and the PQRS trapezoid notation on the bottom. So um, corresponding side to AB would be PQ. Corresponding to BC would be QR. Corresponding to CD would be RS. And then corresponding to AD would be PS. A proportionality statement or a statement of proportionality, means that all of these ratios that I just wrote are going to be equal to each other. So I can say that AB over PQ is equal to the ratio BC over QR, which is equal to CD over RS, which is equal to AD over PS. So all of those ratios would be congruent or equal or proportional. This next example says, decide whether the figures are similar. If they are, write the similarity statement. If you notice, they tell us that P, angle P and angle N are congruent. Um, because angle P and angle N are congruent, we know that the corresponding sides, the shorter sides, um, creating that angle would be 4 and 12. So we could write a um, ratio for that. I could say 4 over 12, and we could simplify that to 1 over 3. Um, if you look at the longest side of both of those triangles, that would be um, the 12 and the 18 um, for the length side. I would put PQ on top and LN on the bottom. So when I'm writing this um, ratio, I need to put PR on top, which is 12 over 18. Well, 12 over 18 simplifies to 2 over 3. If you notice our first ratio simplified to 1 over 3, or second ratio simplified to 2 over 3, um, I could already tell you that these are not similar figures because the sides ratios are not proportional. Um, 2 over 3 is not equal to 1 over 3. But just um, to show you, the third 
proportion or ratio that I could write would be 9 over 10.5. Um, but what I can say, because they are not proportional, um, these two triangles are not similar. This next example says you have a photo 4 inches wide by 6 inches long that you want to reduce to fit a frame that is 1.5 inches wide. How long will the reduced photo be? I can set up a proportion here. Um, I can put the original width, write a ratio of the original width 4 to the original length 6 and then set it equal to um, the original width 1.5 over, or I'm sorry, the reduced width 1.5 over the reduced length, which I don't know, so we're going to say x. Go ahead and cross multiply, and you would get 4x equals 9. You have to divide both sides by 4, so you get x equals 2.25 inches. You could also draw yourself a picture here um, to help yourself out if you needed to. That's totally fine also. You could draw the original photo and label it 4 inches wide, 6 inches long. And then you could um, draw another photo that after it's been reduced and make, mark that width 1.5 inches, the length x, and set up your proportion that way if you needed to. A scale factor, if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides is called the scale factor. So a scale factor is just one ratio. We don't have to set up a proportion. This says a painting is similar to the wall on which it is hanging. Calculate the scale factor of the wall to the painting. That last part of the wall to the painting is important because it tells us which um, measure we want to come first or on top of our ratio and which number measure needs to be on the bottom of our ratio. Because it says wall to painting, I'm going to put my wall measure on top, my painting measure on the bottom. If you look at corresponding sides here, the 15 foot um, length of the wall would be corresponding to the 6 foot length of the um, picture and then my 8 foot um, my wall is 8 foot feet high and my painting is only 3.2 feet high. Because a scale factor is just one ratio I can just choose one um, of this, the corresponding sides to write the ratio from. I would choose the um, 15 feet and the 6 feet because that doesn't have decimals. It's easier to work with whole numbers. It, that's just the fact. Um, I could write it as 8 to 3.2, but then that would be a little bit tricky to um, try to simplify. So for my scale factor, it has to be wall to painting. My corresponding sides would be 15 and 6, so my ratio would be 15 over 6. A scale factor does get simplified. 3 can go into both 15 and 6, so it can be simplified to 5 over 2 would be my scale factor from the wall to the painting. The next example says parallelogram ABCD is similar to parallelogram GBEF. Find the value of Y. If you look at corresponding sides here, 12 would be corresponding to y, 15 would be square, corresponding to 24. Just like we've said before, there are several different ways that you could set up your proportion to solve for y. I chose to set it up as 15 over 12, which would be the two measures from my smaller parallelogram, equals 24 over y, which would be my two measures from the larger parallelogram. Notice 15 and 24 are both on top and they are both, um, they are corresponding sides. And then 12 and y are both on the bottom and they would be corresponding sides. No matter how you set up your proportion, this next step should be the same for everyone. If you do not get what I got, then your proportion is not set up correctly. We have to do 15 times y, which is 15y, and then 24 times 12, which is 288. Now I'm ready to divide by 15 on both sides. And when you do, you get 19.2 equals y. This last example says triangle UVW is similar to triangle um, YXW. Find the value of A. If you notice our corresponding sides, um, A would be corresponding to the 12 um, 
the length, the side with a length of 12. 5 would be corresponding to the side with a length of 6.4. Just like before, I'll say it again. You can set up this proportion several different ways. I chose to set it up as a over 5, which both come from my smaller triangle, equals 12 over 6.4, which both come from my larger triangle. If you notice, a and 12 are corresponding sides, and 5 and 6.4 are corresponding sides. That's why a and 12 are on top, and 6.4 and 5 are on the bottom. When I cross multiply, this step should be the same for everyone. I get 6.4a equals 60. I need to divide both sides by 6.4, and when I do, I get a equals 9.375. Today's assignment is on page 476, it's numbers 8 through 38 even.